Elves Ooh. versus goblins, dual deck, right? Dual here. deck, yeah. A little bit more powerful than a dual deck. <laughs> Slightly. And Joel, the right, right, <laughs> is playing four copies of Gaius Cradle, is playing two copies of Dryad Arbor. So this looks very much no like, Ember Cool, like Reed's deck from last week. Yes. He is playing the second Crater of Behemoth instead of the Regal Force, which is uh, one of the one of the points that's debated among Elves players, as well as the fourth the Natural Order, where Droll only has three. So Tom Ross on the play with a Goblin Lackey. If he has uh, one of his three Tar Fires or two Gem Palm Incinerators to follow this up and get it through, then this game might be over fast. Yeah, because most assuredly, Joel is going to cast an Elf here yes. to block. But... Getting hit by a laggy is one of the worst feelings in all of Legacy. Mm -hmm. Has been for about eight years. And how many potential removal spells did you say, Tom? Three has? Tarfire and two Gem Palm Incinerator, and also one Sting Scourger, which would get the job done. Okay, but if it's a death right, that, that takes away the Gem Palm. Yes, out. it does. So Gem Palm only deals damage equal to the number of goblins, which is currently one. It cycles and has a cycling trigger. <laughs> <laughs> or he could just triple up. He's the boss because he has an entourage. You know, he he has a lot of lackeys that follow him around. But that also reduces the number of potential goblins he could have in his hand. Yes, it does. Although the deck refuels quite quickly when you start getting matrons and ringleaders. Yeah. But Joel Wright drops another high toughness goblin, or sorry, elf, in Metal Sentinel at 2 2. Plays a cradle. Can make two green mana off that, and can make one mana off of Deathright Shaman, eating his own wooded foothills. It's glimpse go. of nature, so he's got one green floating. Metal Sentinel, and then glimpse for the extra cradle. Plays the Heritage Druid, no mana floating. He draws a card, but now he can make three mana off the Heritage Druid activation. Looks like we're going off. Yeah, another Heritage Druid untaps the Sentinel, draws a card. So we've got two green floating from the first Heritage Root activation, and now he just says go. Oh, he Stunned. missed. He's hoping to change some elves, get a little more value out of that, but he missed. Yeah. Tom Ross has got to be breathing a sigh of relief now. He, he, he likely thought that his game was over, and all of a sudden he gets to untap, and at least one of those lackeys is getting through. He goes chieftain rather uh. than wasteland the cradle. He is going aggressively here. I guess you don't waste it on the Cradle because Joel has so many non-elf cards in hand that you have to assume he has another one. Okay. Lackey only puts in a Mog War Marshal though. Not any ringleader or matron shenanigans. No sharpshooter, which would be the real backbreaker. So this is what I was saying, is that with three lackeys in his opening hand, or including his first draw, just not any more gas to put into play. Yeah. Well, if he had a matron, if all all three triggers go on the stack, you have a matron, you put it into play with the first one, and you get a ringleader, and then the ringleader comes in with the second one, and then you could put something you hit off the ringleader in on the third one. But without the matron, yeah, the the chain has to start somewhere. And Joel Wright played a second Nettle Sentinel, which is ideal with Heritage Druids, but nothing to follow up on, so he really did run out of gas there on his glimpse of nature. Didn't draw into anything. Now this turn, you have to think that Tom is going to get rid of the Cradle. He has a Wasteland and a Rashadden Court now. The Mana Denial, not too good against Elves usually, but it looks like he's going to be putting on enough pressure that if he can tie up that Cradle, he might actually... Okay, so Goblin Chieftain and the Lackeys. Hmm. And the two tokens come in. They're all two twos, thanks to the Chieftain. So you have to trade off for the Chieftain. The question is, do you block anything else, and if so, what? Looks like he's going to start by gaining two life. And he takes it all. So This smells like a crater hoof behemoth. Tarfire could be lethal. Tarfire would be lethal. 
but you think Crater Hoof, he can make five off of the Cradle, but... Ooh, Pyromancer, a Nettle Sentinel. That's pretty good, too. So Tom cycles there, possibly looking for the lethal tar fire. So he hit a ringleader off of it and then put it into play with a lackey trigger. That was all in response to the lackey trigger. So now he hits another ringleader and a skirk prospector. And yep, move those over so you can see it. Hits another ringleader off of it, off the first ringleader. So that's coming into play and that's going to give him a... Is that a lethal tar fire? It is indeed, and Joel Wright scoops it up. Tom Ross takes it down, even though Joel had, you know, a glimpse draw. He yeah, we thought he was going off there with he the fizzled. Druid. <laughs> he fizzled. He fizzled and ran out of gas. Ran, ran out of elves to play, and he took a bit of a chance there, taking it all, going down to one, possibly trying to set up the crater hook for him to play on his turn. I can only assume that's what it was. And Tom. Made a pretty good play there. He cycled the gem palm incinerator in response to the lackey triggers, looking for a goblin to put into play. Found the goblin ringleader, chained them, and uh, yeah. And as I was fire. saying all game, once that chain gets started, it is lights out. It snowballs so fast. And this is traditionally how a matchup plays out. Um, the goblins deck has a ton of removal, and the elves decks need a critical mass of things. But the elves decks have a much more powerful combo draw. You know, it has this combo orientation that the Goblins deck doesn't really. The, the, the Goblins deck's, quote, combos involve, like, some grindy card advantage and, like, aggressive starts. And, and Ringleader is the kind of combo yeah. at the end. Yeah, but, like, the, quote, the combo is just, like, a bunch of card advantage. The Elves combo kills you. Right. And that's the key difference. So, Joel Wright trying to go off didn't uh, wasn't able to complete the process, and Tom Ross takes down game one, and as we look to the sideboards, looks like just a bunch more removal for Tom. He has the third Gen Palm Incinerator, the fourth Tar Fire, Pithing Needle might come in and for the, uh, the insect guy, the Symbiote, Wirewood Symbiote, and Pyrostatic Pillar as a one of in Tom Ross's sideboard, along with two Pyrokinesis, a real backbreaker. Yeah, both of those cards. Pyrostatic Pillar would be really good if you want to defend against the combo draw. The glimpse draw. Yes. Yeah. Triggering off of every cheap spell, three or less, that you cast and doing damage. Yep, so that's how Tom is set up. On the other side, Joel Wright has. Looks like another natural order and a progenitus, so that's a decent place to start, just try and get him dead. You can also thought seize, but I don't know how effective that's gonna be. You know, you have to take some incinerators I, sometimes, but I, I don't like bringing in discard spells in this matchup. Yeah. That's really more for anti combo, actual combo decks. Yeah. I mean, traditionally discard is good against goblins because you can tag their ringleader and then they just have a bunch of one ones. But this deck, it, this version uh, of Goblins is a lot more robust, and Elves deck can't really afford to take all this damage and time to Thoughtseize. Like, if you're trying to go off with Glimpse and you hit a Thoughtseize in your packet of lands, you know, yeah, instead you, of an Elf to keep going, that can be the game. Dilute your critical, neither of these decks wants to do that. Like, yeah. You bring in non goblins. Your ringleaders are going to get m much worse. Yes. Uh, I believe back when Goblins was in the standard, someone wrote an article about this. It mm -hmm. might have been someone like Zvi Mashowitz talking about the percentage of goblins in your deck and what that does to your average number of goblins off of ringleader. Yeah, it looks like Tom is likely going to take out pile drivers. They just get clogged up, uh, you know, you just block yeah. it with a Nettle Sentinel or what have you. Uh, usually. does not do anything. Yes. Either. Uh, usually not the card for these types of matchups and bring Psychotog in more removal. That's, Psych that that's card why was... they gave that pro blue. Yeah, flavor-wise it doesn't make that much sense, no. but uh, at the time I understand why it was needed. Flavor-wise that card doesn't make sense at all. Like, pile driver? He's pile driving, which... But he's actually doing like a sleeper Makes him hold. stronger, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm not, not sure about that one, but... 
I I feel like I have to give the edge to Tom Ross uh, post board, which means winning that first game is so huge because now he just has way like even more removal and the elves deck doesn't really improve all that much. Well, you're right, but being on the play now, Joel Wright, I think, can at least take this game. Yeah. We'll see what happens. He's also got Abraham Lincoln holding a boombox. That is an awesome shirt. Don't really know. Meanwhile, Tom Ross is just being a boss. In, ca in case you don't know who Tom Ross is, he's the guy who played Asha's favor in a Pro Tour Top 8. That would be the Counterspell Blue no. White 2? No. no. It is an aura for white and two. It gives your creature like flying and first strike or flying first strike vigilance, something like that. Does it cycle? No, it has no other abilities. What? It doesn't cycle, doesn't pump your creature, just gives it some random abilities. And constructed? No, limited. Okay. It was it was not playable at the time and he played it and uh, yeah, well, he's an awesome, awesome mind of the game. He, he approaches the game like very few other people. It looks like he has uh, an Aether Vial on one. Probably the best start, probably even better than Lackey since Lackey just gets blocked by the, you know, massive L's. But Vial will always be able to generate some sort of advantage. There you see the uh, Modern Masters Aether Vial. A card that when it was first printed, no one thought was good. They didn't have it in their affinity decks for a long time, but it has become, it, it was bannably good and is was good in every format that it uh, has been available in. So, Joel Wright has started off here some lands and then an Elvish Visionary that is also Dryad Arbor you see in play. And the Future Sight version of Dryad Arbor, so no controversies will be happening today. Yeah, I thought that was a forest. Even even if he had the forest version, he's got Zendikar Full Art actual forests, mm -hmm. so it wouldn't be camouflaging in. I'm, I'm still pretty upset that they printed that other Dryad Arbor. That was the From the Vault Realms version of Dryad Arbor. It looks very similar to uh, Avacyn Restored Forest. Yes. And it actually has the big green mana symbol in the text box. Which is very misleading. There, there it is. There you go. It looks like a forest unless you read the name. Yeah, if you stack line. your lands in a way that you can't see the power of toughness, it looks exactly like a forest. But we don't have to worry about that. Tom Ross now the picks his vial up to vial. one and plays a second eighth of vial, which is very important because the goblin decks actually go up to three and four with their Aether Vials, sometimes even five for Siege Gang. So this is actually pretty awesome. He's tapping Dryad Arbor for Glimpse with uh, Cradle in play, and Tom Ross has a Pyrokinesis in his hand. So he's actually, if he's just Pyrokinesis on his turn, then Joel would have full information and be able to decide whether he wants the Glimpse yet or not. But since he's doing it now, he's not going to get a Heritage Druid activation and will be short a bunch of mana. He'll still be up five to five mana, but he won't have the Heritage Druid anymore. So unless he redraws into the Heritage Druid and you know more more elves to activate it, then he could be short on mana. And doesn't pull the trigger there. Well, he can still respond to this visionary. Got to respond to the third elf coming into play. You don't. Want oh sure, yeah. You don't have to respond to. to three yeah, you don't have to respond to the glimpse. You can respond to the third elf. That makes see sense. What, yeah, see what his first elf is. So, okay, he lets the trigger resolve for the draw. Is he letting it enter the battlefield? Letting the visionary... Okay. Wow. So the, battle, the visionary enters the battlefield. He draws a second card for that trigger. Now he can make three mana. Tom Ross with a very trigger. deceptive line here. Now here we go. Quirion Ranger points to his glimpse. Draw a card. So we've got two, two green floating right now. We use the Dryad Arbor to play the Glimpse, the two forests to play the Elvish Visionary, then taps three elves and is using one of the three green mana to query on Ranger. Well, and you can no longer choke out mana, so I don't think that there's... 
Wow, so, so he does pyrokinesis. pyrokinesis. A now. very strange time to pull the trigger on this. But he is taking out... And the cradle taps to make four in response. So now there's six green mana floating. And the Quirion Ranger and the card draw on the stack. Draws the card. Wow, why would somebody have a great draw there? So five green floating. He gets a draw card from the glimpse and bounce the Huron Ranger and draw another, uh, draw another card off of it. But if he wants to continue the chain, he's going to need to find mana at some point. Draws his card. Looks like he's kind of breaking off. Has a couple of cradles and a couple of other go. lands. Okay. He passed? Surely you just take a free card there. Well, it looked like he made a hand gesture passing. Need to take is this hand. frustrating? Is this, is, is this frustration at... Wow, and Tom Ross yeah, tar fires pass. the Wirewood Symbiote end step. Joel Wright's frustration at fizzling two games in a row got to him, and he, he made a major misstep there. Let's see if this is a creature, because he could have continued the chain if this is a creature. He's not going to show it to us, though. It is a creature. So he theoretically could have continued. Cast another Quirion Ranger and has a Dryad Arbor. Dryad Arbor is actually a, a forest, so it can be saved by these Quirion Rangers, so it can't be wastelanded. Looks like Tom Ross's one card in hand was uh, Goblin Ringleader. He just draws Lackey and plays it. Ross did use his first wasteland to take out the guy's cradle, has a second one. And now Joel Wright is reloaded. He's drawn a second heritage druid. That also would have been drawn off the first. Like he would still be going off right now had he bounced the wire symbiote. And I think meanwhile also he has a second glimpse of nature in his hand, doesn't he? Uh, I think it's three land or two lands. Uh, I'm not sure. Looks like he just hits a tar fire off of the ringleader. A very disappointing ringleader. You definitely want more value than that out of it. Good enough, though. Tar fire takes out the heritage druid. He also has a goblin chieftain, which he drops in. As we said, the aether vials on four and three. Kind of the ideal positioning for the goblin deck. So you get a free chump here. Bounce it with the Curian ranger. Two, Taking three, five. Four. Or I'm sorry, four. You're right. Not sure why the Dried Arbor is in play. It should be in his hand. Assuming he bounced it. Uh, this is awkward. <laughs> what did I miss? Did he just did take he... all the damage? He might have just taken all the damage. Either way, Death Ray Shaman now in play. Tom Ross going to his turn. He's got a Violet three, a Violet four, and two lands. So anything he can draw, he can play. And sure enough, he hits a Mog War Marshal, which represents four more power, hasted with the Goblin Chieftain. Cedric Phillips token right there, guys. Attack. Casual attack. Now he looks to block. Yeah, based on the way he's blocking now, I guess he did not block last turn. <laughs> the judge making him spread out his attackers. Likely for our benefit, so we can see it more clearly. Sure enough, he does block the ringleader, the most damage. And he's thinking about how else to block. His hand is two Gaia's cradles, it looks like. So no glimpse Look at that body language. <laughs> Full on face palm. It's like he's got the, the face hugger from Aliens. <laughs> Sucking your soul. All right, so he did block like that, bounced the Dryad Arbor this time. By the way, he would have drawn that Death Right Shaman, so he would still be going off. He would still be powering through his deck. In your alternate universe. Yes, yes. In, in my alternate universe. Let's see what is the top card. If this is like a natural order or something, it's a virtual ranger, so he would still be going off. Okay, you send up a return to a draft. Please send on up to the segment stage for your event. 
Echo untaps, chooses not to pay the Echo. Another Cedric Phillips. Can we get a Cedric Phillips and an Eric Smith? Wow, ringleader and Joel Wright just packs it yeah. in. I've seen enough. Too many goblins. And Tom Ross takes it down in the uh, dual deck battle. Yeah, so goblins... They're, they're the superior race. I wouldn't say that. It was a superior <laughs> deck. So Tom Ross with the goblins... He didn't even do any sharpshooter shenanigans. Goes to 4-1. and one. Joel Wright drops to 3-2. and two. Rapidly his dreams are fading. Yes. Of making top 8 in this tournament. Still alive for Tom Ross. We'll probably see him later. 